Hello there, welcome to the channel, this is Nerd World, and today I am once again exploring fighters in Star Trek that are kind of not that shit. And today is the final one in the series, because there really aren't that many. And that would be the Swarm Fighter, not the Swarm Fighter I already did, but the one from the JJ verse in Star Trek Beyond. The vessels, you know, that managed to slice the Enterprise into itty bitty little pieces. Kind of remind me of a swarm of hornets. Individually not overly powerful, but clearly as a collective group of craft, very deadly and lethal and possibly the most effective small combat craft I think I've ever seen in Star Trek. Before we get started, please like, share, subscribe, comment down below, tell me what you think of them, please tell me what you think of Star Trek Beyond. Go on. Amuse me. With that said, let's get into this video. Okay, yeah, right, but let's just cover these ships. <clears throat> the Swarm Fighters came from the planet, or at least were abandoned on the planet of Ultimate, sometime prior to 2160. A Starfleet vessel called the USS Franklin would crash on this planet under the command of Captain Balthazar Edison. He and his crew, or those who survived the crash, would discover the vessels and eventually learn how to use them. As he slowly morphed into Kral, he would use these ships to waylay any vessel that came too close to the planet as he searched for his ultimate weapon of vengeance. The fighters, although not armed, were incredibly durable, extremely fast and maneuverable. They could hold two pilots and were strong enough to crash through the hull of most alien starships, rendering the defenses of the vessel useless. In sufficient numbers, these craft could cut through entire sections of the ship, severing them from one another. Of course, this would disable most alien starships. How effective they would be against the Borg vessel, I'm kind of curious, but certainly against Starfleet vessels, they were highly effective. The ships were susceptible, however, to phaser fire, but were small enough and maneuverable enough to torpedoes and other ranged weapons of that nature were not overly effective against them. These small craft were used to deadly effect in the destruction of the USS Enterprise in the 23rd century under the command of Captain James Tiberius Kirk when he was lured into a trap on a supposed rescue mission to Ultimid. After the vessel was ripped to pieces, it would crash on the planet's surface, scattering the crew everywhere. The vessels would continue to patrol. <laughs> Fuck me, these ships are stupid. <laughs> Later, upon escaping the planet, Kral, Edison, whatever you want to call him, was planning an attack on a Federation starbase called Yorktown, using a massive number of these swarm fighters. They were defeated after Spock managed to analyze using the antiquated technology of the Franklin this signal that the craft all used to communicate with one another and utilizing a primitive radio wave transmission was able to jam it, therefore disrupting the communication systems between the fighters, which used some kind of cyberpathic control system to coordinate all of their actions. In doing so, they became disorientated and, I don't know, they crashed into each other or something and began to blow up to the power of rock. The Beastie Boys. And that's how they were defeated. My god, these ships are stupid. What do we actually think of these craft? Now, there are a lot of things to take apart with these vessels. They're not armed, a bit like the Swarm Fighters and the Delta Quadrant. They rely on very large numbers in order to be effective. On its own, one of these ships might be a nuisance, a bit like a, a wasp or a hornet buzzing around you, but on its own, not overly a threat. It could be destroyed by the standard weapons of the Constitution class starship or any other vessel that pretty much came up against it with phasers or disruptors. But as these things attack in huge swarms of hundreds, if not thousands, or even potentially tens of thousands of craft, there's simply no way to destroy enough of them fast enough before they ri literally rip your ship to pieces, which does make them very effective. But once again, we fall back on, they only really work when there are large enough numbers of them. Okay, so what technical data we do know? Exactly how big these crafts are isn't known, but they appear, and this is only appear, as I never get a good enough look at them, and I've tried, I've gone through it, I've tried to see where the ships line up. They look like they're probably in the range of between maybe 8 to 10 meters in length to me, but that's, I would say, my hypothesis. They are completely unarmed and are built of an unknown but extremely durable material, which 
Strangely, it's strong enough to allow the vessel to survive impact through another very strong alloy or material, at least cut its way through it, which it maybe utilizes some kind of advanced shielding reinforcements on the frontal plating of the vessel that allows it to survive such a, a hard kinetic impact. An alloy like titanium, of course, is several times stronger than titanium or depleted uranium or other tungsten or other dense alloy. So cutting through it, not easy. And this thing manages to do it with minimal to no damage as the vessel seems to be designed to weather it. It's clearly got some kind of inertial dampeners and control systems that are designed to weather and absorb that kinetic impact, but yet can be destroyed by a phaser. Now, if it is utilizing shields or inertial dampeners to give itself that density or enhancement to get through the hull plating of another vessel, then that kind of makes sense because that wouldn't give it any additional defense against an energy-based weapon that would blow it up. They are unarmed, they have two pilots and are both capable of atmospheric flight and spatial flight and have warp capability, which brings me to one of my biggest questions about this film. And you might be able to tell I don't I, I don't like this film. I, I don't. I actually don't mind the JJ films that much. I am, but I, I'm not a huge fan of this particular one. I do like the first two, kinda. But I this one. It's just so many things about it that make no sense. But, forgetting that for a moment, the why did Kral, Edison, whatever, not leave the planet? These ships are warp capable. Why didn't he leave? I get maybe they didn't have the skill to fix their ship. I mean, they didn't have Scotty. Scotty is a miracle worker. We all know it. Fine, he could fix the Franklin, but maybe they couldn't. Fine. But they had all these other warp ships. Why didn't they just leave? They're Starfleet officers. They know that Starfleet doesn't know they're there. That They haven't been abandoned. They just no one knows they're there. So just leave. You've got warp ships, leave. I don't understand it anyway. There's a lot of plot holes, so that's one of the ones that stuck with me. And yeah, these ships, yeah. For whatever else I think canonically about them, they are very effective because technically these ships would exist in the prime timeline. In fact, everything that happened in this movie up to the attack on the Enterprise and the attempted attack on Yorktown would have happened in the Prime Universe, or at least most of it. Simply because Edison did crash on that planet aboard the Franklin. The Franklin existed in both Prime and Kelvin timelines, as it was over a hundred years basically before the events of, events of the Narada. Well, quite a hundred years, but you will get what I mean, decades earlier. So that ship existed. It crashed on Ultimid and Edison and his crew got stuck there and they would become crawl and have these fighters. Now, maybe the Enterprise never dealt with them, maybe it was the USS Constitution or the Defiant or one of the other ships that would deal with them. Who knows? Or maybe no one dealt with them, maybe reached the time of Picard and Edison's still there stewing in his juices. Maybe there was something that would be brought up in Discovery in the 32nd century, who knows? But all that's canon, so... Yeah, these ships exist. So, accepting what they can do, they are one of the most effective fighter craft ever seen in Star Trek. But again, as like my theory stated, they do require large numbers to be effective against starships. Now, that's not a bad thing, but it does call out, like in other sci-fi franchises such as Star Wars, a fighter in Star Wars, many of them, the X-Wing being probably the best example, is effective against larger capital ships to a degree, because it can carry concussion missiles, it has blasters, uh, and some of them even carry capital-grade energy weapons, so they can at least be on their own a threat. I mean, it took one X-Wing to effectively destroy the Death Star. I mean, I know it's more than that, but it effectively what happened. You see Darth Vader in one TIE fighter take on an entire fleet. They can, and sometimes are, effective against larger ships. Not always, because of course if they were, then everyone would just have loads of fighters and not any big ships. So, in conclusion, this is probably the most effective fighter craft ever seen in Star Trek. It has its weaknesses, inexplicable weaknesses, but it was still effective and it was still lethal and it was still deadly for many, many years. And there's a lot of questions about it. Why was it abandoned? Was that their home world? Did they just, did they just misplace these things? Did someone steal them? Yeah. Anyway, they were very effective little fighters and had, would have likely had their uses on their own. It would have functioned quite happily as scout craft and other, sur and other little survey and transport missions because, they, in a sense, they were a lot like a Starfleet shuttle in that regard. So you can see 
why these craft were effective if it does sort of scream stupid a little bit but let me know in the comments below i may be a little off with these ships I, I get some people probably really like this film i know a lot of people do and a lot of people don't and unfortunately i'm in the camp of i don't really i enjoy certain aspects of it but it really feels like a star trek film i've got to turn my brain off to really enjoy it and to me that's not star trek but whatever let me know in the comments below what you think of the movie what you think of these fighters and are there any other fighters you want me to explore because i was as i said in the previous video considering doing like the worst fighters in trek and which but that would be a much longer list because pretty much every other fighter type in star trek is shite and not overly useful as a fighter craft more just as like an upgun shuttle so moving on if you made it all the way to this video thank you for watching like should share like should share subscribe and comment down below bye bye